Okay, so here we have uh, two 1106 motors, uh, 6000 kV and 4000 kV. These were sent in by iFlyRC.com. Uh, these are the iPower IX 1106 motors. Uh, thanks, iFlyRC, for sending the motors so I can test them and share the results with you guys. So, motors come, come in these uh, anti static bags, the annoying ones that make noise, and uh, just they come two per bag. So they send you two motors in one of these little bags and they they give you the basics uh, uh, four M2 mounting screws. Those are pretty small. Uh, looks like they're M2 by 5. And two prop uh, M2 screws. Uh, look like an M2 by 8. Anyway, those are uh, pretty standard. Okay, so here are bo both motors, 6000 kV and 4000 kV. Uh, the build on the motors is pretty standard and nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, they got uh, just the standard 1.5 millimeter shaft all, all through and uh, it's being retained by a standard E-clip at the bottom, pretty easy to remove. Uh, the bell comes apart pretty easily and uh, the stator uh, that's measured here should be six millimeters yeah pretty much six millimeters uh, nothing surprising there as you can see the windings uh, they look they look pretty neat pretty well done uh, looks like they're using single strand wire I believe uh, kinda hard to tell if it's a, a single strand or a bundle of two or three on this uh, small scale uh, your, your typical small bearings there and finish overall is pretty good. Magnets look uh, pretty normal, uh, not uh, extra chunky or anything. Just normal, your norm, normal magnets. Uh, shaft is just pressed in. Uh, so you can see, there's no. Most of these motors don't don't use any balancing at all. So that's not uncommon on these size motors because they're so small. It's just not worth balancing. They should balance okay because all the rotating mass is pretty close to the center so so that's the idea so overall pretty pretty well made motor uh, laminations seem to be 0.2 millimeters so the wire is not that long they only give you about 60 millimeters worth of wire that might not be enough to reach uh, center mounted uh, ESCs. Uh, all these 1106, 1105, 1104 motors they have the shaft, uh, it's only pressed in. There's only very little material that grabs the shaft itself, so the shafts are prone to shifting. Uh, so when you're when you're mounting your prop, because the prop fits so tight you end up pushing the shaft back and then you get a vertical play on the motor because you're pressing the shaft down so that comes out that way and then you get vertical play like this like the mo it'll actually move like that uh, so in order to avoid that uh, what some people have recommended is that uh, you you can actually drill hole uh, a bigger hole on the on the propellers if they fit tight and you use a 1 uh, drill bit and use the, uh, the best one to use is one that's called a hex chank drill bit uh, I've shown it on the on the Brother Hobby 1106 review uh, so you could just do it by hand actually so you make the hole larger using the drill bit and that way it is it doesn't push the shaft on the shaft too much and the other technique that somebody else, uh, I forget the name uh, to give him credit, but uh, I thought it was also pretty good. You align the the shaft on the prop, on the center hole, and then what you actually do is you, uh, you lay it on a flat surface, like so, and then you press on the shaft. You can use uh, pretty much any flat uh, metal surface. Uh, even a dime or a nickel, anything. And so what you do is you you actually just press down on the shaft like that. 
don't press on the base or anything, it has to be on the shaft. So you'll feel it. So you press on there, and so the whole idea is that uh, you're only pressing on the shaft so it shouldn't move. It's kind of like uh, nailed in something. And you know, that'll get you the prop uh, pushed in and it won't push on the shaft at all. Uh, so if the shaft is already pushed back and you're, you have vertical play, one way to fix it is to use a night lock and then you want to use a, a vise uh, so you you clamp it and slowly you uh, you compress it and it'll move the bell back where it should be and you'll get rid of the vertical play uh, you could also use a one of these uh, C clamps these are pretty cheap basically it's like a vise so you would uh, you do have to make sure that, that when you do that, you have to make sure that uh, the motor is completely vertical. You don't, want to ha you don't want to have it at an angle because you may end up uh, bending the shaft. So you want to make sure it's totally vertical. You start uh, clamping on this and slowly, make sure you do it slowly. And make sure you keep it uh, centered and uh, completely vertical. So, so slowly you start uh, clamping it, and it'll it'll compress it, and it'll move the bell where it should be. So that's why uh, another way to do it, uh, if it's already happened, you know, if it's already if you already have vertical play, and yet another way of doing it is if you have one of these uh, channel locks, like a small channel lock but this is not really recommended because when you use the channel lock the force the clamping force is like it's at an angle it's not totally vertical like that so it, it, this is last resource it, it, last resort if you don't have any other tools like a vise or the clamp the C clamp uh, so I don't really recommend this one but uh, if uh, worse comes to worse and what you want to do is you want to uh, align the motor so that it's more you kind of have to guess more or less where the clamping force is oriented so on this one you have to do it at, at an angle the motor has to be sort of an, at an angle and then just kind of do it slowly and also you want to make sure that the, uh, the bottom here is actually rest uh, it's resting on the shaft at the bottom and not the base because you don't want to mess up the base of the motor. Yeah, that's the uh, brute force method. Not really re recommend that one. Okay, so th those are the techniques that uh, some people suggested uh, to fix the vertical play on the, on the motors. So let's see what the motor weighs. And that's with uh, 60 millimeters worth of uh, wire. So that weighs in at 6.7 grams. 6.7 grams for the 4000 kV and 6.6 .6 for the 6000 uh, this has less copper but anyway 6.7 uh, pretty okay weight not uh, pretty normal I think for this size motor so Okay, now let's uh, let's look at the thrust results.
All right, so let's look at the thrust test results for the iPower iX1106 4000 kV. As you saw, the motor measure at uh, 3,990 kV, pretty close to the spec uh, value of uh, 4,000. So that's pretty good. So I went ahead and tested on 3S and 4S, uh, and because of the rather low kV, I limited uh, the props uh, from two and a half inch because uh, anything smaller, like a two inch prop, would probably not uh, produce a decent amount of thrust. You could still use two inch prop uh, on a light quad, but it, you know it's it's gonna be sluggish, you know, especially if you if you run 4S, it's gonna be a heavy battery pack. So on 4S, as you can see, the motor is quite capable. Uh, as we go to the, the two and a half uh, to three inch prop is where this motor uh, does pretty well. As you can see, the amps are also pretty low, so the motor is pretty efficient. So this will be a good option if you want to get uh, longer flights. It matches really well with three inch props on 4S, as you can see, very close to 300 grams at very reasonable amps. And on 3S, it'll, it'll also work uh, with 3 inch props, uh, so that's another option. So, overall, a pretty capable motor and uh, uh, should be good for your micro quad. Uh, so, it's this one's one worth uh, considering, I think. Uh, all right, so that was the test and review for this motor. Hope you find it that useful, and until the next video.